Welcome to this tutorial on sequences of numbers. A sequence of numbers is fairly easy to recognise. It's essentially just a list of numbers one after the other, which goes on forever. And sequences can have certain properties. For example, they can be bounded above, bounded below, they can be monotonic or non-monotonic, and they can be convergent or divergent. So in this tutorial, we're going to try to explain these concepts using simple explanations and diagrams. So to start off, we'll talk about what a sequence is, then we'll explain what it means for a sequence to be bounded, then we'll look at increasing and decreasing sequences, and explain what it means for a sequence to be monotonic, and finally we'll talk about limits of sequences. To start off, suppose we have an infinite list of numbers. Remember this dot 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 indicates that the list goes on forever. And in this list, the order is important. Well, this is a sequence. The numbers in the brackets are called terms of the sequence, and we usually write the terms inside brackets. So we have an infinite list of terms inside brackets. We can give our sequence a name by writing it as an inside brackets. And we write n equals 1 here to indicate that the first term in the sequence is going to be called a1. And we write infinity here just to make it clear that the sequence goes on forever. So this means that a1 is the first term in the sequence, and in our example we have a1 equals 2, a2 is the second term in the sequence, and that's equal to 4, and a3 equals 6, and so on. And the general rule for this sequence is that we have a n equals 2 n for any natural number n. Of course we can represent a sequence using a diagram, but remember when you're drawing a sequence that a sequence is not the same as a continuous function. So the terms in the sequence should be plotted as separate points, rather than being joined up in a continuous way. So here's a diagram of the sequence we were talking about earlier, a n equals 2 n. So here's the first term, a 1 equals 2, here's the second term, a 2 equals 4, and so on. And now we're going to have a look at some properties of sequences, and we're going to start by talking about bounded sequences. So here's a definition. We say that a sequence is bounded above, if it's possible to find some real number m, or whatever you want to call it, such that all of the terms in the sequence are less than or equal to that number m. So this number m is called an upper bound. And similarly, a sequence is bounded below if we can find a lower bound k, such that all of the terms in the sequence are greater than or equal to k. So if we look at our sequence again, a n equals 2 n, Obviously, the terms in the sequence keep going up in a linear fashion, and the first term is the smallest term. So if we just let k equals 2, we can say all of the terms in the sequence are greater than or equal to k, so k is a lower bound. In other words, the sequence is bounded below. On the other hand, it's obvious that if we try to find an upper bound for this sequence, it's not going to work, because no matter how high we make this green line, there's always going to be a term in the sequence which goes above that line. So it's impossible for us to find a number m such that all of the terms in the sequence are less than or equal to m. We say that a sequence is bounded if it's bounded above and bounded below. So our sequence a n equals 2 n is not bounded, because as we've seen, it's only bounded below and not bounded above. Now let's look at a different sequence, and this is a sequence that alternates between two values. So it goes minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, etc. So the general rule of this sequence is that a n equals minus 1 to the power n for all natural numbers n. So here's our sequence. The first term is minus 1, the second is 1, the third is minus 1, and so on. And obviously, if we draw a green line down here, then all the terms in the sequence are going to be above the green line or on the green line. So in other words, the sequence is bounded below by minus 1. And bear in mind, that means it's also bounded below by any number smaller than minus 1. So it's bounded below by minus 2, minus 3, and any other number smaller than minus 1. And similarly, if we draw another green line up here, we can say that all the terms are below this line or on this line, so we can take m equals 1 as an upper bound, and any number greater than 1 is also an upper bound. So the sequence is bounded below and bounded above, and therefore it's bounded. Now we're going to move on to increasing and decreasing sequences. The definitions for these are fairly straightforward. 
We say that a sequence is increasing if every term in the sequence is greater than or equal to the term before it. So just to emphasise, that has to be true for every term in the sequence. And we say it's strictly increasing if this inequality is a strict inequality. And the definitions for decreasing and strictly decreasing sequences are similar, it's just that these inequality signs are the other way around. And if a sequence is increasing or decreasing, or both, because it might be increasing and decreasing if it's a constant sequence, we say that the sequence is monotonic or monotone. So now let's look back at the sequences we were looking at earlier and work out whether or not they are monotonic. The first sequence we looked at was a n equals 2n. Obviously in this sequence every term is greater than the term before it, so therefore it's increasing. In fact it's strictly increasing. So therefore the sequence is monotonic and we can say it's monotonically strictly increasing. On the other hand, if we look at the sequence a n equals minus 1 to the power n, we can see that the third term, for example, is smaller than the second term, so the sequence is not increasing. And it's not decreasing either, because obviously the second term is greater than the first term. So this sequence isn't increasing or decreasing, and therefore it's not monotonic. Next we're going to talk about limits of sequences. When we talk about limits of sequences, we're talking about what happens to the terms in the sequence in the long run. So in other words, as the sequence goes on and on. There are some sequences which tend to infinity or minus infinity, and we'll have a look at one of those in a moment. Some sequences might approach a finite limit, so for example the terms in the sequence might approach 0 or 1 or some other number, and there are some sequences which don't have a limit at all. So to start off we're going to look at the definition of a sequence tending to infinity. We say that a sequence tends to infinity if for any value of m, no matter how large, there exists a natural number n of m such that a n is greater than m whenever n is greater than or equal to n of m. So we write n of m with the m in brackets because n depends on m, so n is a function of m. So for example, if n of m was 10, then we would be saying that all of the terms from the 10th term onwards were greater than m. If n of m was 100, then we would be saying that all of the terms from the 100th term onwards were greater than m. And in this case, we say the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is infinity. And this always means that the sequence does not converge. In other words, it diverges. So let's see how this works in the case of one of our earlier examples. So here are the first 14 terms of our sequence, a n equals 2 n. If we draw a green horizontal line somewhere, for example if we draw the line at a value of 25 on the vertical axis, we can see that there will be a point in the sequence where all the terms are above the green line. So to be precise, if we draw a vertical line here at the value of 13 on the horizontal axis, we can say that all of the terms on the right of the orange vertical line will be above the green horizontal line because the 13th term is 26, the 14th term is 28, and so on. So just to put this in a bit more detail, if we have any real number m, no matter how large it is, we can simply choose n of m to be any natural number greater than m over 2, and then we know that a n will be greater than m whenever n is greater than n of m. Just one small point to make, n of m has to be a natural number according to the definition that we had earlier. So we can't just say let n of m be equal to m over 2, because m over 2 might not be a natural number. So we have to say instead, let n of m be any natural number which is greater than m over 2. So that's just a small point to be careful about. So just to illustrate, what if m was equal to 1000? In that case, m over 2 is 500. So if we choose n of m to be greater than m over 2, we can make it 501, for example. And then we know that the value of a n is going to be at least 2 times 501, which is 1002, which is greater than 1000 as required. So just to summarise, in order to show that a sequence tends to infinity, we have to be able to show that no matter how large m is, there will be some point in the sequence where all of the following terms, not just some of them but all of them, will be greater than m. And if we can do that, we know that the sequence tends to infinity.